What's up, guys? Hey, hey. Can you hear me? Let's try this out. All right, let me uh, try to share this. Let me know if the audio versus music is good. If I need to kind of adjust the levels. No sec. What up? Thanks, man. Trying to get the oh there you go. Now oh, it's working. Type some stuff so you see if I can get this chat box to work. Cool. Weird. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, let me uh, share this real quick. How you guys doing? Yeah, I was gonna keep it chill. I'm gonna just keep keep this going while while I work, and we can just chat. One second. Boa noite. Fuck, where's my pen? Already? There you go. All right. Yo. What's up? I'm getting my reference here. Yeah, guys, just, you know, let's have a conversation uh, while I do some some cool sketching here. Ah, vai ser os dois, cara. Mais em inglês. Deixa eu ver como é que vai ser aí. What's up, Chad? It'd be hard to keep track of both screens at the same time. Let's see here. Yeah, I started making this last night. I spent like a little bit of time on it, so I just wanted to keep uh, keep sketching, kind of refining the, or blocking out the body, you know. Huh. 
Yeah, I'll try. I don't know if I, uh, I, I'm hoping it's recording. So I could just add to the stream. Yo, let's go. I saw you. Okay. It is Iron Heart. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I saw the news. Uh, was it a couple days ago? Yesterday. There might be uh, some something in the works, and I, I've always loved the character and the design. So. So why not? I'm gonna do this for like a couple hours. See how far I can. I can block this out. You know. Kind of keep it simple. Trying to get the shape. And hope it's not gonna crash. This is like, uh, it's like a, it was chugging a little bit, but it's better now. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it safe, keep saving, you know. But yeah, I had some uh, some time some time off to today, so uh, thought about doing this. It should be pretty quick to just kind of block it out. And if you guys are, uh, you know. Hanging in on, on at home, we could just have a conversation. And just kind of keep it, keep it chill. This is not going to be for too long though. Probably like an hour. So if you guys want to chat. This is mostly for me to just uh, test this out because I never, I've never uh, live streamed before, like this. Especially on uh, YouTube, I think I've done it on Facebook a while back, but not on uh, YouTube. We'll see how this goes. How are y'all doing, by the way? You know, it's uh, four right now. What's up, Tristan? I don't know, man. This is this is hard. Just kind of uh, just with the, everything that's been going on. There's work and family and everything else. Today, uh, I had some some time off today, and I've been I've been trying to do this for a while. So then, uh, you know, just thought, why not? Just kind of uh, set it up. And last night I was watching uh, Spiro's, Spiro's stream. And it was pretty cool. So I was thought about, you know, trying it out just to see. How you how'd you like the printer, man? Did you are you able to get it to work? Man, this thing is chugging. What? What? See, I think I need to disable the Go whack them. There you go. Get out of here. That's why it was chugging on me. I have a Cintiq uh, 22 HD, I believe, or 24 HD. Yeah. 
Ja. Yep. I, I also don't know like from how like delay you guys are getting the video like versus the chat because I see the question and then I, I answer it so I don't know like if you guys are getting it as soon as I'm talking or you know if it takes a while so I'm just gonna also throw some color in here as we go make it interesting Actually, let me uh, put it on Twitter too, because I forgot. Sorry guys, one second. If you don't follow me on Twitter, just, you know, why not? <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's like a few seconds. Thanks, Chad. What's up, Zach? I'm good, man. Doing pretty good. Just chilling, having some fun. Like a lot of people, like, actually are usually ask me questions about like why I'm, I, why I do these or like projects like like uh, as much as I can. So th that's why I'm just kind of chilling. Like that's what I like to do, and like this is fun. I'm gonna try to keep it in English guys just because of the the amount of people that that are here so I apologize if I don't speak Portuguese as much I'm gonna try to also like move quick because I know uh, we don't have a lot of time and I do want to block it out and maybe I can speak to some of the things that I'm doing on top of just answering questions um, cause I, so you see here I'm just kind of throwing very quick colors and blocking out the shapes this is by no means the final stuff but I'm just trying to get all the the stuff represented you know the quarantine is as you guys expect you know people are at home we're working from home Everybody's working from home. Uh, you know, how it's supposed to be. We're getting, uh, I think California is starting to open up more of the, uh, uh, I guess, business today. So we'll see what's going to happen. You know, if you're going to have a second wave of the virus or, or maybe, uh, you know, hopefully it's, it's done. I don't know. We're getting to that point where I need to send my kids to school. <laughs> uh, they want to go back to school. You know, it would be nice to go back to work, like in the office, in the studio. But uh, keeping it chill. I'm enjoying this time, actually. Like, just kind of hanging with the family. But we get it, it gets to a point where, you know, it's just, it's just for, for way too long. Who knows for how long it's gonna it's gonna go? Hey Jordan, uh, the color for me is just because it's easy for me to kind of uh, make out what the shape's gonna be. So for example, even here, like without color, it's just hard to tell. Like I don't have to complete like 
define the shape, you know, perfectly just to understand the volume or the, the proportions in the, in the shape. So I just try to throw color as soon as I can. You know, it definitely helps. And here is like probably not even the final design for what this thing is going to be. But I'm starting with the base from the comics. And then I'm going to start kind of uh, tweaking and uh, layering some other 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 details in my not. I'm going to split this arm here. It's because when I dynamesh it, I don't want it to be kind of welded together, you know. This is my favorite video game. Dude, I don't really have a favorite video game. I have a, a lot of favorite games. But no favorites. Hey Wendell, for a key shot, if I use key shot for rendering, I, I've tried key shot before and I, I've used it before. I just don't really like it. Not, it's more of a, a preference because of the flexibility that I have uh, in other softwares, I think Keyshot is just way too hard to like create lights and control the end result. Like every time I try to tweak it the way I want it to look, I just kind of struggle with it. Not to say that the software is bad or anything, it's just I, like myself, I struggle with the way it works. So I prefer to use um, other softwares. Like I can get the same result in uh in like maya or or max so i don't i don't really use it and i also think it's expensive to have like maybe if it was cheaper i'll you know i'll use it more and this music's kind of kind of weird let me uh, switch it up. Hey, Chad. So uh, you ask like how much sculpting do I do, like as a as an art director? Uh, not as much to be honest, but I still try to do it as much as I can. Like I still like. Uh, bring some stuff uh, you know to work like after hours when I can just because I you know I still like to do it on top of my my own stuff but I don't you know I don't have to do it it's just I just do it because I like it so I uh, try to do as much as I can maybe I do like a model every every uh, few weeks or something not like a final model but I do kind of sketching and or I do feedback to the, the team, that kind of stuff. Come on, Joiner. Thanks, man. Thank you. Can you guys hear me all right? And uh, can you guys hear the music as well? I'm kind of curious if this thing is working as expected. So my uh, routine studying. Uh, so I I, uh, 
I don't really have one. I just try to do it as much as I can at night, like after work. You know, so I'll, I'll start working at around 10 and then I, uh, you know, work until, you know, as late as, as needed. And then after work, you know, I'll stay with the kids, put them to bed, and then I'll, I'll start sculpting something or start working on some personal work. Then it really depends. Like I try not to press or push it more than I think I can handle, you know? So it's, it's more of a feeling like, that's why I'm always starting a new project. Cause when I do, I just keep going, you know? It's just easy. Like that goes back to just motivation. Like I, I know that question will probably come up at some point, but to me, if I, uh, if I'm, uh, if I'm, if I have a project started, it's easy for me to go back to because I want to finish, you know. So even uh, that's why sometimes I just start something even if I don't want it, because I know like once I do, I'll, I'll have fun and I'll, I'll go back to it. Similar to this, you know, I'll probably start this today, work at it for a couple hours, maybe go back a little later, try to finish out the sketch, and then uh, try to wrap it up you know, tomorrow or something, like I'll probably get and get this done this weekend. Um, and, and this will kind of keep me going. If I didn't have this started, then I'll, you know, I'll probably not do anything this weekend. This is just kind of the start of it. So this question here, Wendell, uh, if you want a portfolio for collectibles and games, is it a problem to to both or to mix both kind of models? I mean, it's kind of it is kind of a problem. Um, it's not like a a big deal just because if you want to work for games, you need to at least have some in-game models on your portfolio. The problem is when you don't have any, then that's like you know you're probably not gonna get a job because you don't have any like you you haven't shown that you. That you know the process of making a making games or making an in-game model you know what i mean so the if you want to have if you want to work for games then at least have some in-game models and then uh you know once you have that then you're kind of good to go you can just do a high reses you know for for your portfolio because that's also uh that's also important just have some some more uh I messed it up here. Just to have, you know, high res models for uh, for your portfolio. So I'm just trying to think how I'm going to fix this. So yeah, you know, make sure you have uh, make sure you have both. Now, if you just want to work for collectibles, then you don't have to worry about in-game stuff. If that makes sense. Thanks, man. So for the render, I'll use uh, mostly, I use 3ds Max as kind of the base, at least for my personal projects. And I'll do uh, most of the stuff with Arnold, but I use V-Ray as well. It really depends. I think V-Ray, you can have a little more control uh, over kind of the shaders. I prefer Arnold for lighting and like, uh, you know, kind of, uh, PBR lighting, but I think V-Ray can, you can get away with like, you can kind of hack it more stuff. That makes sense. I think Arnold works very well, like out of the box. If you just kind of throw an HDR, you could get, you know, key shot quality off of it. Uh, but f like, if you start kind of messing with the shaders too much, I, I don't like Arnold as much for that. I think he uses like too many like custom custom shaders and, and nodes and all that stuff. But I've been using more Arnold than V-Ray. And ZBrush. Like uh, a lot of my, my work is rendered in ZBrush as well. And you can find that, you can find tutorials for all that stuff on the uh, characterartworkshop.com. Here, let me type it in here so you guys can see. 
Oh, never mind. Can't really type it. So what do I think? Uh, is it just for render? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sorry, too many questions here. I missed a couple. Um, so let me answer this one. Do you guys hire freelance artists from other countries or just work with the people in house? So we do hire from other countries. We do a lot of outsourcing, but it is mostly through uh, companies. Very rare that we work with individuals. So that I, I want to touch base on that because I do uh, want to tell you guys this because I don't think a lot of people do that. But if you are trying to work from home or, or uh, I guess, freelance outsourcing and stuff, make sure you guys reach out for, you know, outsourcing companies as well, not just studios. Right, uh, I guess uh, AAA Studios, because uh, you know, to my point here, we do work with a lot of outsourcing, but it, it is more throughout or through uh, outsourcing companies, because it's very hard to set up uh, independent contract, uh, independent individuals. So, you know, usually we will pick artists from from uh, outsourcing companies that that we want to uh, work with us, so we don't have to go through the contract and uh you know setting up the individual and all that stuff it just kind of goes through that company so that's that um the other question was which one is better specializing in something like character design or something of everything so it really depends on or, or uh, i guess it depends where you are it depends what you want to do you know if you want to work for uh uh, for big companies, then you're better off specializing, right? Because uh, that's what they hire for. Like big companies, big game companies are very specialized. So I do recommend you guys you going for a character design. Uh, kind of, you know, specialize on that. If you are trying to work for advertising or a smaller company, you know, and that's totally fine. Like even uh, smaller game companies or... Uh, small kind of movie studios or ad companies you know they some people prefer that because it's a different workflow excuse me you have a lot of creative freedom you know i've worked for many smaller companies where it is kind of a different deal um, so it kind of really depends on let me let me turn this light off because it's, it's giving me a glare okay so it kind of uh, it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to work for smaller companies like that, have a little bit more uh, creative freedom. Uh, not that you don't have it on big companies, but you know it's kind of it's easier to get on a smaller company. So then I'll, I'll recommend you kind of going a little more uh, gen uh, generalistic, just more kind of learn a bit of everything. Now the other part of this question or this answer is depends on the level that you are. If you're starting, if you're a student. Uh, I definitely recommend you, you going a little more uh, open and just learn everything because once you, uh, you know, you need to learn that, especially at the beginning. You need to learn everything. I see a lot of people going like straight into ZBrush, especially like if you see stuff like what I'm doing. Um, and it's very easy to like, you have to pick something, of course, but it's very easy to just go with ZBrush. I recommend you guys finding like a kind of a, uh, you know, a school or a 3D course where you're going to learn about everything, modeling, rigging, texturing, rendering, composing, just everything. And then, uh, you know, then after that you can specialize because it's going to be a lot easier for you if you understand everything. Like otherwise you struggle with, uh, you know, a lot of things. You can't really just be a sculptor. Like, you can specialize as a sculptor, but uh, you need to learn everything. So you kind of under, you kind of know what's going on. Yeah, sorry guys, if I don't answer your question, just, just you know, ask again. Because I'm just going, every time I look at this the screen, you know, I'm just kind of going with the, with the flow here. Um, 
What are some outsourcing companies you recommend for game industry? That, that's a tough one. I can't really recommend anything here. Uh, you can kind of look it up. There's a, there's a bunch of, if you type it in, if you just do some search, you can find a, a few. How many pieces should I make to a uh, portfolio? So that's a good question. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, Cause this is a tricky one and, and it's not, it's not so much like how many pieces you should have. Uh, you should make sure you are, when you look at your portfolio, you should make sure that you are touching up on everything that, that needs to be, uh, that needs to be talked about. You know, what I mean by that is that if someone look at, looks at your portfolio, depending on, uh, kind of the level that you are, you need to make sure it speaks to everything that, that, uh, these people would have questions. So for example, uh, let's say you are kind of trying to find a job and you're a student or are you starting like what are the questions that that i'm going to have or whoever is hiring you is going to have you know does he know game work game uh workflow does he know topology can he uh can does he know anatomy like what are the basic things that people are looking for if you're starting like ask yourself those questions and see if your portfolio answers that you know it's not so much about how many pieces you have, you know, it's more about like, what is the message? Like, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, sorry, questions, question. Yeah. What, 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 you know, what's people going to think about your work? Uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of websites or interviews would, would ask you like, or it will ask you to provide like, you know, two or three pieces or five, uh, two or three finished pieces, uh, 10 years experience, whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's in the, the requirements for the position. You know, that's usually just to, um, just to kind of filter some of the, the, the applicants because, you know, we don't want everybody to be applying for positions, right? So that's just to kind of filter some of, some of that. But usually it's not about how many pieces you have. It's just about like, are you, are you answering all the, the questions that are, that are going to be asked without you going to the interview? You know, is your portfolio good enough? You know, what's up me here? <laughs> Yo, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Uh, this this the viewport here. I think it's just default on the new ZBrush. It's probably here on the preferences. Hmm. Cam view. Nope. Oh, thumbnail. There you go. Yep. Yo, guys, let me let me. Uh, I'm just gonna grab my water. 10 seconds, be right back. All right. Sorry. I'm going to be talking for you know this much better be drinking water <laughs> yeah this is funny um all right uh do character artists have some freedom in create in the creation of the character do we just follow a concept uh it, it is definitely more about how flexible you are or if you like to doing you know certain things because uh, the short answer is yes you definitely have freedom and people who like the design process uh, you know get involved in the design phase right like there's a lot of back and forth between design and and 3d and you know people want to you know support they will ask for for uh, more concept paint overs whatever but um, 
it's more about like if you if you like it or not so if people like it then sure the tricky part with 3d is because it takes a lot of time to do stuff in 3d as you guys you know probably know so a lot of things are um, easy easy resolved in uh, in 2d so you know instead of someone spending like a week trying to propose something in 3d it's easier to um, do a quick sketch in 2d and then approve it so that uh, you know the extra week that you're gonna spend is just uh, what it needs to be you know we don't have a lot of time to uh, do a lot of back and forth in 3d This character is a uh, Iron Heart. Iron Heart. It's like a Marvel Iron Man. Yeah, you you got it, Zio. Mousy brush, não é piratão. Cara. Ai, cara, os caras são foda. O, eu sou patrocinado, velho. Que é tudo, tudo na faixa. Uh, you do portfolio review sometimes. Uh, so I, I've been wanting to do them for a while. I am, I, I'm gonna do it on this, uh, this period that we are at, at home. I want to do a portfolio review, kind of a, uh, a day of that. Just kind of, uh, I'm gonna pick a couple portfolios and so yeah, just look out for my on my Instagram. I am gonna try. I'll, I'll try to do that this weekend actually. At least grab a couple so we can just talk about it. So if you are okay with me sharing your portfolio and uh, reviewing him on my Instagram, just watch out this weekend for uh, on my stories, and we'll do something like something like that. Let's see, if you're not working game, should I really focus in real time? Or is it okay uh, with high res Arnold render? Hey, uh, so this question from uh, Yosef, uh, you should do both, man. Like, it's okay if you if you do that, high res with Arnold. But like, uh, I kind of touched on this a little bit today. It's just, you should have both. You want to make sure if you want to work for games that uh, that you have game stuff. On your portfolio. Let's see what I'm gonna do here. Okay. Where can we share? I open up like a. I'm gonna open up a thing on my uh, on my Instagram. You guys can uh, send me send me the link. Just watch out for that on the this weekend. So this question, do you guys consider the application of people that don't really have industry time but fill in up other requirements? Yes, 100%. So it's just, it is um, it is more about the work you have on your portfolio. Like I think even, so the opposite is probably even, uh, even uh, more common. Like people who had a lot of industry time but don't have a good portfolio, good portfolio uh, that doesn't really mean anything, you know? So the industry time that you usually see on on uh, job requirements, it is just to filter some of the applicants. It's more about like what you have on your portfolio. Like usually people have industry time and they see the job opening, you know, it is there's a higher chance that uh, this person has a stronger portfolio but if you have a strong portfolio with no industry time then yeah you you get you get higher you know i'm not going to talk about 
studio stuff or this is more about us here guys so be mindful of that it's about me trying to help you guys and having a good time as we do this Get a little lag here. Trying to do both, but uh, we'll see. See what happens. Don't forget to save. ZBrush crashes every uh, 30 minutes. So, see here. Hey, uh, Lucas, I'll do a portfolio, portfolio review. I think uh, we can keep like projects for some other time. So this question like 3ds max or maya or what's the industry standard so i think the industry standard is maya more than 3ds max but there are studios there are studios that use you know both there are studios that use 3ds max who's use maya if i were suggest uh, to suggest you to uh start with something i'll probably say maya because i've seen more studios use maya than max and i say that being uh being a max user Like I uh, use Max for my uh, personal work, but at the studio I use Maya. My, uh, this is like switching to the Cintiq and the, the monitor. This is like messes up my eye. Let's see here. Hey, uh, are you ever gonna make a video or live showing your Photoshop process. I can. Um, I don't think it'll be anything that you guys haven't seen it yet. I feel that a lot of Photoshop is more about just doing it, you know? Like I don't have any special brushes or or anything. But I definitely can. Yeah, I'll try to try to put that in there. Kind of fit it somewhere. Hmm, let's see here. Any tips on speed and discipline besides just grinding art every day? Uh, let me think about that one because I'm sure I can think about some tips. I try not to do it... Um, I try not to do it every day just because just because I you know the the best thing is to do it every day I'm usually thinking about what I'm doing how I'm gonna improve what I'm gonna improve you know while doing that so a project could be of course you can find things that you know all right this is gonna help me improve X Y and Z every project will help you improve somehow but if you if you're trying to be more specific to what you're trying to achieve um, then I think you can then you can improve right um, you can improve speed by doing quick sketches like and it, when I say quick is not to get it like do it quick just because you, you you're time boxing yourself try to be smart about how you're spending your time so here for example um, I could spend a lot of time trying to refine this shoulder because it's not perfect and it's gonna change but I'm just going, I'm just jumping into a lot of different places, right? Just so I don't try to noodle everything, you know, to a perfect kind of block out because I know this is going to change and I'm going to play with the design. I'll probably give it like, you know, give it some panels later on, do some interesting stuff here. But I know I'm going to add that later. I'm just going to even leave that in there. But, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to spend time making it perfect. Is more about 
uh, touching up on everything. So you can definitely improve your speed by doing that. You can improve your design, design eye when you're just trying to design stuff in, in 3D. It is not easy to design stuff in 3D, I'll tell you that. Like I've been trying to do it for, for years. Uh, I am very uh, humble and, and I, I think a lot of the people who can design in 3D you know they have it is very it's a very hard thing to do um, so I admire artists that, that do designing 3d like you know Ian Joyner uh, uh, Marco Marco Plouffe and uh, all Ben Morrow like a bunch of these other guys like uh, Bogorov Fausto all these guys who do designing 3d like you know props to those guys because it is not easy uh, you just have to learn how to commit it is hard to to commit to stuff in 3d because it's so easy to change so to me like it's it, you know um, you can study design by just uh, time boxing yourself and, and just going with whatever you uh, whatever you're trying to design without changing too much so like even here I'm just gonna have to start committing to shapes at some point and just kind of going with it similar to what you do in 2d so you can kind of get better at that by just doing more and more uh, a lot of things that I, I've done last year for example I don't really like as most of the artists that I know right so you can definitely just kind of redo the work that you've done uh, years back so a lot of the things that I'm doing now so you know like the, the Yoshimitsu it's a very similar to a character that I've made like eight years ago seven years ago then I'm like redoing because I'm like, you know, I, I know I can do better now. The Hoshi, the, the samurai sci-fi character that I did last week, that I finished last week. It is a very similar character that I've done before. So I do recommend you guys just looking at your old projects and thinking about how can you make it better and just redo it. You can definitely improve by doing that. Um, so, I, you know, there are things that you could do to just, just get it better without... I think grinding is definitely... All these things that I'm talking about here is uh, you can only do it if you grind, if you just keep going. So that's kind of you know that's number one, but you can just be smart in how how you're working. That's number two. And sorry, I'm talking, but I'm not checking the chat while well, I do that, because otherwise it's just too much. Um, when we should decide that our model is ready now, on the design perspective. Yeah, I think kind of what that's what I was kind of touching base right now. You just kind of have to uh, have to commit and be flexible to do more versions. If you uh, if you later on you think it's not good enough, you know. So I'm just gonna right now. I'm kind of almost doing like a one to one. Not not really one to one, but I'm just trying to get the base design elements from this character because then later I can easily just tweak it I'm gonna start adding a lot more of the the MCU kind of uh, Iron Man details and shapes like I'll probably change some of these shapes to kind of fit some of that in here make it a little more modern not that this is not modern but a little more uh, uh, more in the way of like the MCU, whatever the you know those guys are doing. See if we can make it fit the fit the universe a little bit more. Hey, upside, upside trial. <laughs> uh, if I uh, if we're gonna make another game course like we did with the sword, so I, we don't have plans for that. Like we recorded that one uh, when Glauco was uh, living close by still. So then after he moves, it's, it's kind of a, a little harder to get something like that done. But I, I am working on some stuff. Hopefully, uh, we'll have some stuff uh, soon enough. Uh, if I Do you use a lot of refs for quick characters that you've been posting? So I guess the answer for that one is yes and no. Uh, I do use uh, quite... A lot of refs but when I'm doing it I try not to look at them uh, as much I'll pick maybe uh, two or three 
main ones maybe a little more maybe four or five and then just go with those because otherwise the design starts to get muddy if i'm using like too many refs when i start doing like materials and details then i'll start pulling more more references but this uh, when i'm designing it i try not to go too crazy with references because then i can just kind of bounce back and forth a lot What's up, man? So, let me touch this one. The playlist is uh, Joyner Lucas, this, uh, his latest album. So, just check that out. So, the question here, because uh, I get this one a lot. What do you think is better? T-pose uh, or then uh, transpose into a pose and then sculpt it into a pose? So, the answer to that one is uh, T-pose for as much as you can and then break the pose before you start refining it too much if the pose is like drastic because otherwise you're gonna have to sculpt it again so you just have you just have to be smart it really depends on the project so you just kind of have to be smart on how uh when you're stopping the pose I'm kind of snoodling too much. I notice that I'm like kind of not paying as much attention to what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. So um, we're not moving as fast as usual here. How stressful it is to make a game. It is very stressful, dude. <laughs> it is really stressful. For many many reasons it is the most stressful thing you can ever imagine all right uh, what do you do when your character is not looking according to your visualization so that's a good one because uh i see a lot of people kind of struggling to finish a project when they don't like like even yesterday I saw like uh, someone on Twitter be, be like uh, I'm just trying to finish this before I uh, kind of get burned out or something like I just don't I don't like it so you know here it is so this happens quite often and uh, people just have to uh, kind of know when to when to stop for a little bit not give up because you you usually for 3d you, you dedicate a lot of time for to get to a certain point you know what I mean? Like you spend like weeks on a project and then, yeah, you reach a point where it's like, yeah, just I'm not feeling this, whatever, let's start something else. And I, I suffered for that, from that for a long time. Um, and the best thing that you could do is just put a pause on it. I, I highly recommend you you not posting when that happens. Just kind of uh, keep, it on, keep it on the shelf, keep it on the drawer. So when, you know, I have a bunch of projects that are, that I've never showed anyone that that I'm probably gonna pick it back up at some point. So you can just kind of like keep it, save it, uh, save it for some other time that you're gonna go back to it and, and finish it because you could you come back with like a different uh, with fresh eyes, you know, different ideas, and you can kind of take it to uh, completion. Um, you can finish it if you post it. And I, you know, I've done this before. If you just be, you do like, oh, here it is. It's kind of like a, a cool study. Let's move on, whatever. Then you're just not, never going to finish it. It's just that that's what's going to be. Like, even if you say, ah, oh, you know, maybe I'll finish it later. Like, dude, you're not going to do it. It's already out there. This is the uh, the worst thing from for social media. Like, when it's out there, and it's out there. Like, then the, the motivation is, is gone. You know, even if you say it's not, that's how the brain works. Like, I, I highly doubt that, you know, someone would ever pick it up to finish it. So, take a, take a break if you don't like it. Put it somewhere. Leave it there. Like, nobody's, you know, waiting to see what the heck you're working on. This is more for you. Like, even the stuff that I'm doing, like... 
yeah, you guys like the, the stuff that I usually the when I, I post stuff, but it's not like you're gonna die if you don't if you don't get it. You know, this is more this is more for me. Like I, I do it for me. Um, I'm just trying to get it out there. So do it for you. Like put it. Don't don't post it. Don't don't put it out or anything. If you ever go to an interview, you can show it if you want. You know, but once you put it out there, then the motivation is gone. So we just kind of take a pause, you know. Let's see here. So the courses in Portuguese subtitles. So most of my stuff has subtitles in Portuguese. They're not perfect, but you can follow for sure. Go go check the Gumroad stuff. They do have subtitles. Uh, na, 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 na. Is Zero Masher good enough for retopology for games or do you do manually? Hell no. Zero Masher is not good enough. You have no idea, dude. The topology for games are super tight. And they're very like every every vert counts. And it needs to be really clean. So the answer is definitely no. You have to do it by hand. There are ways to get you uh to a quicker result that's for sure like you could start with the zero masher to get a base but um, that will probably only get you halfway there this is looking cool I don't know if I'm gonna do the legs to be honest uh, let's see here ah oh, fuck it Let's do the legs. Hey, the silhouette up here is a uh, is a it's a preferences. There's a thumbnail. You kind of change the size. You know, let's do that. So it's helpful, for sure. Kind of change the. Fix some proportions here. All right, let's see here. Hey, Wobble. Yeah, I know it's 2 a.m. Holy shit, dude. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. Go get some sleep. The retopology, like I, I do in Maya, I do in uh, Topo Gun. Topo Gun's pretty good. Uh, Maya is also really good, like the new tools. I do it. Max is also really good. I've done a lot of things in Max. Is there any games you wish you had worked on? Yes. Uh, fighting games. Like, I haven't worked on any fighting games yet. And that's definitely one that I need to do it at some point in my career. I want to have that experience. I am a big fighting game geek. I would love to work on a fighting game I had opportunities before it just didn't line up with the time um, timing wise which sucks so we'll see Yeah, Street Fighter would be cool. I've actually started to make a couple Street Fighter characters last year because I wanted to do a little series on that. But I, I got a, I kind of got pulled into some of the other projects. But I do want to do some Street Fighter stuff. Street Fighter is not my favorite fighting game, though. I appreciate the game, um, but it's not. It's not like I wouldn't say like it's my dream project king of fighters though that would be dope if i work on a king of fighters uh next gen title that will be my shit dude that would be amazing king of fighters like even tekken that'll be fun uh 
I love Mortal Kombat games, but I don't know if I would want to work on them. Uh, Injustice, though, like Injust, I had an opportunity to work on Injustice before, but it didn't, it didn't work out. But like, if I ever want to like art direct something, it'll be one of those Nether Realms, uh, you know, fighting games. Give me Marvel vs. Capcom by Nether Realms. <laughs> if that ever gonna happen, you know, that would be the fucking, that would be the, the shit. Dude, that'll be awesome. That probably never happened, but I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Maybe the gods are. Maybe the gods are hearing. Uh, yeah, Soul Soul Calibur would be would be dope too. They have some cool designs. It's just not as uh, not as popular. Let's see here. Yeah, guys, please, you know, answer the question if you feel that uh, I'm just kind of missing some of them. Because when I'm t when I'm answering and sculpting, I'm not looking at the the chat as much, and I've been kind of fucking. <laughs> That's the thing. Like you can noodle something for a while if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, and that's exactly what I was doing. Like, why the hell am I I'm like polishing the fucking chest? Are you dumb? So the character has like a little kind of heart type of thing here that I'm not a big fan. I'll try to design something else actually. Probably still do like a something in the middle there. So the armpit, just real quick for production, like you would usually just sculpt it like this. Like that's the that's a proper pose for when you're sculpting something. So this way you can kind of clean up the armpits and everything. May, you know, make sure the normals are not uh, the normals are not kind of uh, you know, kind of penetrating, you have like any artifacts, then that should be that should be good to go. Oh Victor, vai tomar no cu, velho. É isso que tá. <laughs> no brass. Let's see here. What does the character artist do after the models are ready? For the game, you mean, I guess, right? Like when the characters are done for the game? Uh, just bug fixing. Like usually, for that, that's for every, every game, right? You make a character and you do a high res. And you move through production, you get in the game, animation is, you know, animating, whatever, people are playing the game. While you're playing the game, maybe you, like, you're making variations for those characters, you know. Um, so the work really never end, ends in there. It only ends when the project is done, basically. Because there's, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be done on top of just making the models. Bug fixing, like... Maybe the character doesn't read as good on certain cinematic or in the game. So then you're like, you get a bug and you have to kind of address that. The work is never really done till, until it's out of the door. I don't have... Oh yeah, I use default ZBrush materials for poly paint. Yes, for composites. Yes. You can kind of uh, change. I usually like, kind of mess with the spec. So let me, I'll make a quick metal out of this because you can make this look a little cooler. Increase the spec. I'll tr turn on like metallic because then the, it will pick the diffuse color to um, to my spec. Uh, colorize spec. You can kind of like mess with it so it just looks a little more metallic. And then you can also use just like base metals and stuff like that. But for this, kind of keep it simple. Dude, hit up Joe Rogan. Get me on the get me on the podcast. Let's do it. I like I like his show. It's fun. How do you guys animate textures? So that one, uh, like the material editor that we have, 
uh, it's like a, in, like a, you know, I can't really, you know, say a lot of it, but it's just like we can do animations on, on the material editor, and then that that gets played in the game, pretty straightforward. But not really. <laughs> There's a lot of steps that needs to be done. Can't really go too deep into just technical stuff here, guys. Hey Wendell, I'm not. I do not have plans to open a mentorship. What I what I'm thinking about doing actually is to pick a few a few guys, a few people, guys and girls, to do a free mentorship during this uh, during this time. I thought that would be fun and uh, try to help some of you guys. But it will have to be someone that's a little more advanced that I'm not going to really teach the teach the workflow. I just want to mentor them a little bit on their projects. So I am I am going to do that this weekend. Open that up this weekend. So if you guys are here, then there's a higher chance for you to see that. So I'm going to dedicate a little bit of my time to just kind of try to help some people a little bit. Fuck, I'm back to this torso again. And I, why am I doing this? This is going to change. Anyways. So. Uh, Hi, Elisa. Good to see you. Let me get some more female hips on this thing. What's going on with the music? There you go. Yo, let me get this this song here. And change the tunes. Hey, I do work with the basic materials, yeah. I was doing that for most of it. I just kind of tweaked it because uh, just to show the, how to make it a little nicer. This actually helps because this is going to be mostly metallic. So uh, just getting a little bit more uh, of a highlight will help me just see like artifacts. So I can kind of change it, fix it. Yeah, I don't I don't really want to share my PSN. Why would I do that? <laughs> I'm just when I play games it's just for chill. <laughs> Yo, CG showcase, stop spending, dude. Why are you spamming? Every project gave me a lot of stress. But, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the games that I worked on gave me a lot of stress.
painting during the process and to improve the idea of the character has uh, another purpose. Yeah, the painting, it is, it's to just kind of, uh, as I'm just designing with color, you know, I'm not refining the, the sculpt. Like if you look at the sculpt, it is pretty rough. See that? Um, so with the paint, I can kind of have, have an idea how I want it to look without spending a lot of time just kind of working on the shape. Like this is more the design phase. And uh, I can get it faster visually what I want out of it, you know, with color. And then uh, later it's just, I'm just gonna start refining these shapes. Oh wow, that looks like shit. There are no shortcuts in life, my friend. No shortcuts. There is no control Z or con control shift hard surface. Just gotta do it. What's my all time favorite character? So I said that at the beginning on this that I do not have favorites. Like I have, I, ha I have them. I don't like to, to make or. Uh, make any favorites because you know everybody has his own uh, opinion about stuff but my all-time char favorite character is the predator <laughs> after i said that i do like the predator though just because of just everything that it represents for me and uh kind of influence in my work and how I got to do this, right? I think Predator was more, like a huge influence. So I am working on more Predator stuff, even if people don't like it. I do. Yeah, I can, so, okay. Let me, uh, for just refining, I know some people wanna see that, I and mean, it's been an hour that we're doing this. So I'm gonna start refining this a little bit so you guys can at least see the process. So let me save it. All right, so uh, I do have all my brushes on, on keyboard. Yeah. So the brushes here is uh, all my kind of lower keys, inflate, move, standard, clay, dam standard. I can kind of uh, kind of change it real fast, and then some of the more kind of uh, one-off ones that I still use, like pinch, clay build-up, high polish, H polish, uh, and slash. They're kind of like here, easy to find, but kind of keep it keep them there. All right, let me make this nice and slick. All right, so for refining stuff, what I would do here, so let's say I have this the helmet, right? Uh, again, you can find, this is very similar to uh, my, my sci-fi workshop. So let me pop this up here so you guys can see. One second. you go to uh, character art workshop there is a sci-fi design class which hopefully I'm hoping most of you guys have seen it but I, I kind of this is not you know this is sped up just because of the video but the this is like a five five four hour 
video that it's not sped up it's just me talking and doing exactly what we're doing here but explaining like step by step so if you guys haven't seen it go check that out basically I'm gonna just do a couple couple tricks here uh, if I were to just start refining this I'll start just kind of splitting it up into pieces um, I don't want to I, I don't want to do it right now because I, this is gonna change like I, I want to design this a little bit better but once it's uh, in a good spot you know what I would do is like probably you know either mask this Like I'll, I'll mask this out and then I'll kind of like extract it. Like extract as a new piece and then start refining it, you know, from here. So this would be a one off piece and I'll do it for everything. So like here, I will kind of mask this, this plate and then I'll like extract it, you know. So then I'll start splitting it up into multiple pieces and then just kind of refining it from here. I could like zebra mesh this. Like let's say I want to clean up this, this edge. Um, I'll just hit zebra mesh and I'll try to get, so basically zebra mesh will give me a topology that follows somewhat this, uh, the flow. So it's easy for me to like smooth it out, clean it up, you know, so this will be kind of a clean piece. See? So I can kind of like from here start to break it up and uh, kind of refine the shapes. Um, so more, more like that. So the reason why I don't want to do it right now because once I start doing that process, it is very hard to go back and uh, change the design. Like that's more of a final, final step, I would say. Like, I like to start doing that when everything is somewhat established because, um, yeah, after that, it's like, if I wanted to, like, redo, like, let's say I want to redraw this plate, you know, I want to kind of split it into, um, split it into two, something like that, then, uh, you know, I'm just going to have to do it again. So I try to do it like that as kind of a final I want to refine this a little bit better like this definitely needs a little bit of love from uh, kind of the amount of plating like this will probably be like metal so I'll probably define this a little bit better that needs to kind of just you know just just refine this more I can probably spend like another half an hour just getting this helmet to look the best it can it can be you know, like the eye here, I'll probably want it to have like a little bit of extra, extra detail. I'm painting like metal or something. Logic to God, I'm gone. Yeah, so this, you know, it's just, uh, I want to spend the time and just kind of getting it, get it to where it needs to be. I'm going to start looking into more reference because right now I only have the comic, the comic book stuff. Like I said, I'm going to start pulling references from, uh, from Ryan and uh, Sanders like, and all those guys, like the guys who worked on the Iron Man suit and uh, just see some of the details that I can, that I can add to this to make it, make it a little more unique. You know. Let's see here. Questions. Questions. Uh, booleans. Uh, I don't really use booleans as much. Like I, I do it for very specific things. When I need like some kind of uh, specific cuts or something. But I do most of the things with masks. So even if I want to like boolean something here, I would uh, I would mask it and just kind of like like push it in on the shape, you know, like kind of like that. Like I try not to use boolean. So it's a little like time consuming, unless it's something that's like very 
uh, specific that I need to do with booleans. Yeah, you should go back and with Dynamesh. Usually when it's already with, with topology, like it's so easy to do topology in ZBrush. You know, not final gain topology or anything, but like just base topology so you can sculpt on it. That uh, it's better to just go go back to Dynamesh, fix what needs to be fixed, and then then just ZBrush ZB mesh again, you know. For posing, I, I don't really recommend anything else. Like you just gotta get better at doing it in ZBrush. I'll show you guys a little bit of how I would do it here. Once this is good, I mean this is all one piece, so it'd be kind of kind of straightforward. But if I uh, transpose this, so it's all one piece. Well, you can you can kind of do a quick pose here, fairly easy. Let's see here. Do something that's not as as complicated, but but yeah. From here, like I'll do a lot of masking, and once I have a mask, you know, I'll, I'll kind of use a, a brush to kind of like soften soften the mask. That's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Like ZBrush, you know, it will mess up your sculpt. That's why if you're doing a very extreme pose, like you gotta plan that ahead, like. This will mess it up, kind of the the pose that I have, but you know. So from here, I can kind of, kind of change, and go back, kind of change the pose, you know. You know, so kind of like mess with it. Uh, mask so like here I'll mask it and then I'll kind of with a very wide brush I'll just kind of like blur it so then you can kind of uh, kind of change the pose you know you can do stuff like that then the same thing on the legs, mask it, brush, soften it. So you can start to get like a pose out of this, but like I said, you know, it's going to start messing it up. So when you're happy, you can just go back. Like I'm not going to do it just because the model is still intact, but you get the idea. Sorry, that was a little long. So, let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. No, I don't use Blender, so I, I wouldn't be able to speak to the differences between Blender and, and ZBrush. And uh, for the game industry, it's like non-existent at this point. You have to learn Maya or, or Max. Dude, that might change in a couple of years. But uh, all the tools that the companies have are built on those softwares, Autodesk softwares. So you just gotta gotta learn some some of those packages. <clears throat> how how important is learning Maya for a three D sculptor? It's like huge. It's a huge thing, dude. You have to learn a base software, either like Maya or Max or something. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll upload the stream. Yeah. Dude, I can't really show what I'm what I'm using, but I'm using a Cintiq. Yeah, let me see. I have a... Let me see if this works. <laughs> I have a, like an arm on the Cintiq. There you go. There you go. Yeah, this is a 22 uh, Cintiq, but I have a, a 24 HD that I use on the, this, my my uh, my other computer. This in the office is a 22. Uh, I don't know 
many Colombians in CG, man. I'm sure there's plenty of them. I just don't know. All right, another round of questions here. Am I planning on creating an Indian God 3D design? No. Maybe one day. I don't really know a lot of Indian gods, to be honest. Um, what do you think about studying sculpting at university? How did you learn it? Uh, if you have sculpting classes, dude, why not? You know, I think at the end of the day, sculpting is just a lot more about you than the class itself. Because there's so much theory behind sculpting than just kind of, you know, practice and trying like any other art. Like you can kind of learn the basics, like materials are very easy to find. You know, maybe you don't have the best materials in the planet, but you can definitely find materials. ZBrush, you know, it's just everybody has access to it. So, you know, it's just even if you have basic classes at school or, you, you know, college, whatever. Uh, it's all about how the time that you put on, you know what I mean? So materials for uh, for learning, you know, especially if you're gonna start uh, learning sculpting. Let me, if you guys have access to this, let me pull some books here real quick. You're gonna see my, actually, you're gonna see my bookshelf. Uh, that should be that should be cool. All right. So there are a couple of books. There are a couple of books that I recommend. One second. Let me see here. Alright, so uh, this one is a pretty old school, Anatomy, Anatomy for Artists, that's a good one, a lot of good references in here, um, just a sneak peek, this book, let's see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you know, it gives you like a, well, this is the worst page that could possibly open it. But it gives you like a extra page that goes like on top of the photos. So you can kind of have an idea of what's going on. That's an awesome book. So like for the hands, you can kind of layer that. Yep. This is a pretty, uh, pretty good one. I'm sure most of you guys have it. This one, uh, ZBrush, character sculpting. From uh, 3D Total, I like this one. Uh, I think I'm in it, or something. Maybe. But this one, uh, this one has a kind of a step-by-step -step and a lot of uh, breakdown projects. That's a good one. This is more for just overall like sketching, constructive anatomy. A lot of good kind of gesture and then this one this is a must-have this is a little more traditional pop sculpture um, you know Tim Bruckner that was this guy is fucking awesome uh, this is a little more traditional but you know you have to learn traditional to uh, you know to learn digital as well so a lot of just like tips and techniques on on traditional sculpting this this is fucking awesome it's just a good book to have um, okay and then last but not least figure sculpting you know 
Philippe Ferrault. Again, this is traditional, but this is the this is the book, or all all his books are fucking incredible. So he would kind of show like step by step on sculpting the form. You know, get this one. Anyways, quick break for that. There's a bunch of other ones. There's a bunch of other ones, but uh, these are pretty good, you know. So that's just on books. I think for uh, like materials overall, there's so many shit online. You know, my tutorials on anatomy stuff, this shit's like 20 bucks. I don't even know how much, but it's like really cheap for the amount of content that you have. Like I didn't have anything like that when I was starting. So that for me, like I try to put out as much as I can. Oops, let me fix this. I try to put out as much as I can on the content because <clears throat> you know it's easy, easy for me to just get it out there. And uh, if you guys can get it cheap, I know it's not cheap in Brazil, so I apologize for that. But you know, what I'm gonna do? I'm not. I don't live in Brazil. <laughs> With that note, uh, you can get stuff on for free on YouTube. It's definitely more about like what where you are on your uh, <clears throat> on your career. I think. If you're trying to start, <coughs> excuse me, if you're trying to start, like, I don't think you should buy anything. Like, there's plenty of materials out there on YouTube. Uh, they can just, you know, just, there's like a couple years, honestly, of material that you can, that you can go without buying anything for a couple years. That's the one thing I don't understand when people are like, Dude, I don't know where to start. Like how, like we're 2020 guys. We're in 2020, how you don't know where to start on something? Just go to Google, go to YouTube. YouTube has everything. Anything you wanna do, you find there. So, let's see here, the last uh, pop culture, uh, Pop culture or something. Pop I think it's just pop culture, the name. Oh yeah, and then you, uh, Udemy or Udemy. I don't know how you you pronounce that. That she's like you. You can find anything for like five bucks. It's crazy. Like I buy, I buy stuff like Gumroad. Like even last weekend, I was like, dude, I don't know what. I'm just kind of feeling bored. I don't know what to do. Just go to Gumroad. I type like color theory or I don't know art direction or. Uh, I, I honestly I typed comp, uh, composition. I typed in Gumroad last weekend, and so many awesome tutorials came up for like twenty bucks. And I'm like, dude, I just bought two, and that was an awesome day, dude. I I was just like, I do that very often, and I just kind of spend forty bucks. Like instead of going to a restaurant, fancy restaurant, you spend those forty bucks buying, you know, two courses that you, you last you for the whole day. Actually, dude, it's awesome. I think we live in a in a era now that she's just so accessible. It blows my mind how people don't know what to do with their time. Like, come on, dude. It's so easy. When I when I started, and I don't want to sound like a fucking grump old man, whatever, but ten, you know, twenty years ago, fifteen years ago, I don't know, twenty years is too much. <laughs> 12 years ago when I when I started messing with uh, 3d I think the only thing that was out there was like CG talk and uh, 3d total was was also already out and 3d total had a lot of tutorials so that was like for me you know that's where I would go to and I would just copy tutorials I would uh, open up one tutorial in a week and uh, try to copy them, like follow the step by step. And I don't see a lot of people doing that. I feel that people now, like they want a class that will give you exactly what you need, the, pr the buttons that you need to press. I mean, that's kind of what the tutorial is. You just have to do it, you know? Try to just pressure yourself a little bit. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm preaching. Reach out. All right, let's uh, go to.
questions here again. Any tips on interviews? I have an extreme anxiety issue, and sometimes it affects conversations. But yeah, that's you know that's a good question because um, interviews are scary. You know, if you if you uh, if you're starting it, especially if you're doing for companies from like you know outside your like different countries or something like that. So I think practicing is super important. Like, feel free to practice with. Uh, with your friends or your family I think you can easily kind of have a conversation of like and be open to feedback you know if, if you know someone that actually already interviewed for or interview people for a company before like I've done hundreds of interviews at this point not just for art but I, I interview for different de departments as well so if you know someone that has been on interviews just ask him to like interview you you know be open to the feedback you know because he would ask you questions like what do you want this why do you want this this position right why do you want to be in this studio and uh if you don't go to those interviews with the answer to those questions you know ready then you will make you anxious right i think if you if you prepared and you know questions that people would, you know, often answer you it's like uh talk about yourself or uh, what do you like to do why do you like working here why do you like our games you know um, how do you start in this industry like I think technical questions usually are not the ones that will make you anxious because if you know your shit then I think you do well but more of these personal questions that uh, that you often matter more than the portfolio itself because if you are going to the interview it means your portfolio is already you know kind of good to go at least they believe in you so those type of personal questions are usually the ones that are going to matter the most uh, so we just gotta try to be prepared i think that would help with anxiety you know so i hope that helps honestly it is more of a personal thing i know there's probably something that affects your anxiety uh, more than than just what I'm saying so you know you, maybe you just have to kind of look at that and see what is triggering it but I think preparation especially for interviews is it will make a difference and just be yourself you know no reason to get uh, stressed out so let me ans answer this one because I, I can uh, for Bioware and how did you apply for Bioware and how did they found you? I, I don't I don't want to speak so much to like my experience exactly, but I can tell you overall how that works, right? And I think that would be probably beneficial for some people. Um, overall, like the companies that will come to you, it's very rare that you will apply for a job. Not to say that it doesn't happen, but it very it's very rare that you will apply for something and uh, they will hire from your application right it could happen for sure but usually the companies will reach out to you and so how do you do that how do you get to how do you make that happen uh connections right that's the main thing usually so let me take a step back the reason why uh usually that doesn't work like you applying for a job is because a recruiter will find you or a recruiter will look and look up to all the applicants and they will filter right and they will bring it to the lead or to the team based on things that they think it's it's good right and some recruiters are very good some uh not that great but overall like the chances of you getting through that filter to begin with it's kind of low it's it's easier for you to just uh, make connections with the people who are hiring for that position so Let's say you want to, you know, work for, I don't know, EA, right? Or Ubisoft, whatever, Sony, all these studios, right? Like try to know the people who are in the hiring positions at those studios, right? Like so the lead character artist is one of them. The senior artists, is, the senior artists are another one. The team, like maybe you have more access to the, the staff where people are not that senior, that they're a little more, you know, open in social media and stuff. Like try to make those connections try to get close to those people like not in a way of like oh i'm just you know 
I'm just here because uh, you want to give me a job or whatever. No, like this is a community, right? Like you want to uh, know the people, you want to understand kind of what they're looking for. Um, and I don't think you need to go and just ask them like, hey, oh, check my portfolio. Like I would love to work with you. It's just more of like, you know, uh, make a friend. If your work is good enough, they will look up to what you've been up to. They will kind of check on you, your work once in a while, like they will follow you, you know, and then you slowly build up that connection, right? So when so when they are looking for people, um, so when they, so when you do a work that that's real, that's uh, speaks to what they're looking for, you know, they will you get their attention and they will ask you to come. So that's exactly what happened uh, with me at Bioware, for example, right? I was doing. Uh, I did a sci-fi girl. It was one of my first uh, personal. I was doing professional work before for games, but it was one of my first uh, kind of final or finished uh, in-game assets that was kind of speak to the style from the Mass Effect games, right? And so they saw that and they were like, "Hey, yeah, you're we're in, we're interested in having you come work for us." So. That only happened because I was already friends with the lead and the rest of the team. So the the steps to get there, it's, you know, make connections, work on your craft, make sure they're looking at your work. So when they have the opening, they will contact you. You know, it's very rare that you would apply for something and they will just open up a position for you. That almost never happens. Usually it's like, oh, hey, we have a, we need to hire someone. Someone left or new project started uh where are we gonna find this guy oh hey maybe we're gonna pro approach different companies and i know someone from this and this and that and it's like oh hey maybe this guy he's super talented i know he'll want to come work for us let's hire him so it's more about like timing and you being prepared that's super important like you have to be prepared so there you go that was a little long too but hopefully it was helpful for some of the some of you guys. So just real quick, let me touch on this. Uh, three, uh, 3D artists allowed to give opinions on some other aspects of the game, like sound design, gameplay, UI. Yeah, of course. Everybody has uh, is able to voice opinions for sure. Is there more demand for 3D modelers than concept artists? Uh, I think I would say it's pretty similar. Both of them are really hard to get in, especially for uh, for kind of a AAA studio or a big studio. But uh, the the 3D team is higher is bigger than the concept art team. So if you think of it that way, then there's probably more um, openings for uh, character artists than uh, concept artists so for example like uh, at a concept character concept art team there's usually four to five people and a uh, character art team there's about 10 you know so it's like double and I think overall it's just probably easier to find a job but I don't know it depends it's very high level So what do I recommend for people that live in other countries? I recommend the exact same thing. You know, it's definitely harder to get a job, a full-time job when you are from outside the US, for example. But, uh, let me lower this. But uh, you can work uh, as, a, as, you know, you can work remotely. And then once you have more of a senior role, you can, you know, find a company that would sponsor your visa. But I'll recommend the same thing: to make connections, put your put your work on ArtStation. There's not much you can do, honestly. Reach out to companies that you like to work with, not just not just uh, AAA studios, but like outsourcing studios as well. And uh, do the work that you want to be doing. That's the number one, uh, I think, tip here is do the work that uh, that you want to be doing. So for example, if I want to work for 
God of War, then make the characters that you would want to see in the game. The one thing that uh, kind of blows my mind and kind of frustrates me a little bit as well is that a lot of people think they can do it. It's like, oh man, you know, I would love to work on this studio, but they'll never hire me or whatever. I'll never get the chance. Dude, then just do it yourself. Like, if you think you're ready, then why not? Like, if you think you can work at that studio, then why are you not doing it? Right? Like, nothing's going to change if you get hired. Then you're just going to have to do it. <laughs> and they're going to pay you for it. But you're still going to have to do it. And if you're not ready, then of course they're not going to hire you. So just think about that. And that's part of the reason why like, I do my personal work to the extent that I do. Because I have tons of stuff that I would like to do professionally. But I'm not going to wait for the, the opportunity for me to make them. Otherwise, I'll probably never make them. That's not how the industry works. Like everything needs to line up for you to get the chance. Like all the stars needs to line up. For me to work on a Batman animated series, there's so many pieces that need to be lined up, you know. So I'm just gonna try to at least, you know, try to do it because I, I, I would love to work on that. So why not just do it? You know what I mean? That makes sense? So if you want to work on a studio, on a place or a studio, if you're not doing the work that you think you would be doing if you get hired, then of course you're not going to get hired. You're not doing it to begin with. I'm not going to pay you to do it. You just got to prove yourself, dude. All right. When I start to preach too much, you guys have to uh, the, touch the button, the shock button. Let's, let's see here. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? So let, let's talk about Instagram, because that's a good question. So Instagram really effective for artist promotion. Uh, I don't see it as, as more of an artist promotion. I think it touches back on the community aspect of it, you know, making connections. I don't think you promote your work on Instagram. You can treat it a little bit more as a, a little more uh, like uh, studies or sketches or things that you like to do. A little more open. It doesn't have to. You don't have to treat it as your portfolio. Um, now, if you want to be posting photos of your food or your family or whatever, I do recommend you guys doing. Uh, you know, do a separate one, do it two, two different Instagrams. Because maybe, uh, you know, an artist that like your work doesn't want to be seeing your your family photos. So you want to make sure these those people that you wanted to be following you are following you. So, you know, let's say you want to work for, for Blizzard. You want to work for Overwatch. So you want to have the artists from of the Overwatch team to be following your work. So when you do an overwatch model they will they will see it right and they will see your progress see that you're improving uh see that you're playing overwatch you know what i mean they see that who you are as a artist as a person so that i think instagram is like super valuable for that i don't like Inst uh, facebook anymore because i think facebook just turned into this person said so or this person is shitting on this person you know Look at this funny video, like, whatever, dude. I, I don't think people do that on Instagram. So I think Instagram is good for connections that way. It's got to be smart in how you use it. And that's what I, I, I think I mentioned it like a couple weeks back in Instagram as well. I was like, dude, just follow people that are different from your industry. Instagram is super powerful on that on that sense of like you can find musicians that are writing music and you can kind of learn about their process you know you can find you know painters that are like showing their process of like how they paint you find sculptors you can find like bodybuilders that are showing like their their kind of process and the kind of work mentality like you can use instagram in so many different ways that to me is like very 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 valuable you know so look at that. I look at that 
I look at Instagram that way as well. Like I, I learn a lot just by following different people. All right, question here. Do you use anything as uh, for inspiration? So I, I uh, kind of go to different ways of like inspiration. But to me, I think pop culture is is just very inspirational. Like I think I I drain a lot of my inspiration from comic books and books and movies and stuff. You know, when I see something uh, that I like to do then I, uh, you know, I'll, I get inspired. So it kind of, you know, just different. Uh, I, I do go on an art station, uh, Pinterest. I think I can spend hours on Pinterest just kind of going, uh, looking at images. So a lot, I think a lot of things are sources of inspiration. So Twitter, that was a good question. So Twitter, to me, it's a little bit different. And I, I didn't use Twitter for years. I started using last year, uh, mostly because I was more involved on on the marketing for the game. So I, uh, you know, I start using Twitter. But I think on Twitter you kind of reach a different audience, um, and not so much like uh, Instagram where it's hard to reach people. On Twitter, it's so easy to share the work that I find easier to like find different artists and uh, make connections that way. And a little bit, it, there's a little bit of more of a closer connection to different people from the industry that I like Twitter a lot more now than I liked before. I, uh, I don't use it to like, uh, as a portfolio or anything, or I don't ever tr try to get jobs from, from those, uh, those social media tools but like again it's all about connections right someone like I'm working on a couple uh, comic book covers and uh, I feel that most of them came from Twitter to be honest because uh, people were able to find my work over there uh, different than uh, Instagram where the the reach it's uh, you know non-existent Instagram there's like zero reach uh, people would not find your page on, you know, the Explorer. You know, some people will, but it's just like <laughs> the chances are so low. So there's like, it is more about you making connections. So that's another thing to me that some people don't understand is like, I think for you to grow your Instagram, um, you just have to reach out, make connections, comment on posts, make sure you put yourself out there so people can see it, see you, see your page. Uh, Twitter is a little bit easier to get things shared and spread out between the community, you know. All right, guys, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to end this at two two hour mark. So we got 10 minutes. So if you guys have any other questions, let's, let's do it. I think the music stopped. You guys didn't say anything. Let's do it. I'm just too focused here. Uh, so I, I become hopeless when my model does not get in the shape. I already answered this one. Like when, you, when you're when you not liking something, just put it to the side, go work on something else, and then come back. I have uh, a lot of models that are in folders that uh, someday I'll get back to them. So I just have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, projects like that. All right. Um... Uh, Yeah, I'll try to do the portfolio. At least open up so people can apply. Maybe I'll do it through, through my website. So people can send out their portfolios and then I'll pick pick a couple. Tô casado já. How do I make connection? Uh, we we talked about that. Yeah, just kind of reaching out to people. And, man, this is going fast. Thanks, Chad. I know, uh, you know, you, I, I like your questions, man. I hope you see you again if we, if we do this again. Yeah, I do remember that, that interview in uh, the Mecca Girl. 
That was when I was still in Brazil. That was fun. So Zach, the the hiring process didn't affect much. We're still hiring people, interviewing people. Uh, it definitely affected just the uh, immigrants, like the the visa and all that stuff just got completely uh, stopped right now. So we'll see what happens with that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, if you come back, I'll, we'll do it again. Maybe when I'm, uh, you know, about to be done with this guy or girl, we'll jump in again. Or maybe I'll just catch something a little more free form so we can get something final during this two hour. Cause we didn't do much, honestly, on this. I was just zoning out. I was like answering the question and, and just zoning out on this. What's up, Alec? Thanks, dude. All right, guys. Too many questions here. <laughs> I don't even know. Where, I don't even know where to start. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So I'll try to. Um, we'll see what happens when I when I shut this down. See. Hopefully, they recorded. And it's gonna get uploaded to uh, YouTube or something. I don't know. First time we're doing this, so hopefully this shit will get, you know, uploaded and so you guys can watch it again. The top screen is the silhouette, so you can get a thumbnail here on the preferences. All right, so. Um, ba, 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 ba. Also for uh, Portuguese, like I think if we schedule something in Portuguese, then we'll do it ahead of time. We'll try to do the next one in Portuguese, maybe we can talk about stuff in Portuguese. Sound good, guys? And then portfolio review. I'll try to do it on the, this weekend. You know, I, of course, I'm not going to be able to get through a, a lot of different portfolios, but I'll try to open up some sort of uh, way for people to apply, and then I'll pick a couple to uh, to do it. We'll fuzz it. We'll fuzz it live. Thank you, guys. All right, I'm about to shut this down. But I, you know, thank thank you again, guys, from uh, for hanging out. I know it was kind of constant, like two to three hundred people, which is pretty dope. Um, hope you guys got something out of it. I know I just try to do this while we uh, while we chat. I, I think the talking is the more important part. And maybe we'll do this live again for just portfolio review next time. That could be fun. Um, yeah. So thanks again, dudes and girls. Catch you guys later.